Hello and welcome to episode 22 of Let's Play Planet Coaster here on Theme Park Worldwide. I know it's been a little while since I've done one of these. In fact, it's been over a month since the last episode. And the main reason because of that is because of the amount of other videos and vlogs going online on the channel. It's summer, it's been a really busy period for new content. And I really hope that you guys have enjoyed everything uh, that's gone online so far. Uh, it really has been an exciting time. And of course, summer's always that busy. The weather's been quite nice outside. Uh, it might not be today at the time of recording, but over the past month or so there's been some really good weather and it's been a perfect time to go out there and see some of the parks uh, but anyway I'm back inside today to record another episode and I'm joined by the one and only Jack Gator it's been a long time it's been a while I mean you were I don't even know what episode you were last at you were here a while back weren't you for this park uh, yeah very early on with the series and uh, yeah it's good to have you back and we're just sort of finishing off here as you can see by the time lapse footage I'm finishing off some of the theming uh, around around the unnamed multi-launch coaster. I say unnamed, unnamed for about a minute, because uh, I'm going to reveal that to you in a second. Uh, now in this episode, uh, the first sort of four or five minutes is footage just here uh, of this being built. You can see me there putting a bit more hashtag rock work. I love the rock work. Sean's yeah, work <laughs> uh, putting a bit of rock work in. You can also see that the track has now changed from white to red. Uh, that's all to do with the sort of name that I've chosen. Looks like uh, Inter. Yeah, and the, and the storyline <laughs> behind it. Yeah, it's manufactured by Premier. This one, though, not Intamin. Uh, and then we're going to go on to build another roller coaster inside this area. Ooh. You'll also see that I've put in a flat ride inside this area as well, uh, which is like a manufactured by technical park they are and it's a bit like what they've got over at Tivoli in Copenhagen it's like the planes what spin round and not very good throughput to be honest but with what else I plan on putting in this area uh, I think it works quite well uh, but yes let's talk about the name I did ask you what over a month ago now uh, thanks for everyone that's stuck by this series I mean I do intend on it not being this long before the next one I really want to film quite a few episodes in the next few weeks and I have got time to do that so stay tuned uh, thanks for bearing with but yes I did ask about what five six weeks ago for you guys to name what you think this multi-launch coaster should be inside our futuristic themed area uh, now lots and lots of names were picked uh, and I really liked one that has been sent in but he comments on the video it is the one and only Jack Edwards so well done to Jack for getting your name featured uh, and the name for this one is Nova Shuttle Discovery good name yeah good name I like that and it sort of really opens it up to be yeah what, what could it be sort of thing uh, it's all part of the area called Revolution District and all these buildings that have been crashed into uh, by spaceships that sort of town so to speak is called the Revolution District Ooh. I really like that it sounds uh, sounds really good yeah and the story what he's put behind this one this is coming completely uh, come up with by Jack Edwards and he says uh, that the spaceships Nova 1 and 2 have landed mysteriously from space and the astronauts need your help to find out what caused it at the end of the ride, we then find out that they're not spaceships, they're meteoroids from the future. Ooh. So I do really like that sort of theme, what you've come up with there. And that's why I went forward and changed a few bits. I thought, you know what? We've got these two big spaceships that have crash landed. You've got the one, which is the station building itself. And then, of course, you've got the one which has sort of been blown up into smithereens, <laughs> so to speak, throughout the area. Uh, you can also see here in terms of the area itself, you've got the queue line entrance going in. You've got a retail outlet going in there. That can either be retail or it can also be things like toilets, facilities, guest services, uh, or even uh, food and beverage unit going there. That's open. It's just literally a couple of entrances, and we decide that at a later date. Uh, and this is pretty much done. I mean, there's a bit more that I want to do around here, finishing off. Uh, but in general, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to work on that now off camera. We've had a few episodes where I focused on this, and I'm just ready now to build uh, a brand new ride. So we'll give it another minute or so, uh, just showing you some more time lapse footage here, and then we'll start by building a brand new coaster, which is actually going to be the first indoor roller coaster I've ever built in Planet Coaster. Uh, so it could go great, it could go wrong, uh, but we're going to go with that in part of our futuristic area. So, yeah, two big high-capacity rides in this area, uh, two big coasters. I think it'll work really well.
So here you can see then the time-lapse footage of the start of a big warehouse, or should we call it a show building, as Disney likes to call them, and Universal <laughs> starting to go in here. So you'll see throughout this, uh, the whole thing's a time-lapse of us building this coaster, and we had a lot of decisions about what we was going to build. I mean, I didn't want this show building to be absolutely massive, because I think it would look awful on the landscape, and it's, it's quite a, a <laughs> yeah, it's quite a pretty park. So there was a few things what we were talking about building, wasn't the coaster-wise? It's, it's been tough, when we were thinking things like... Um, like Yoda fighters and things like that. So ma mainly looping coasters, we were thinking, for dark rides. But uh... Yeah, that's what we were going to do originally. I wanted it to be like a bit of a Space Mountain style. Not a bobsleigh, but a bit like maybe Mission 2 with a, maybe like a Vacoma oh, looper. Or, or, yeah, like something that. like that. And that very much changed. Uh, we did try building a Euro fighter. Mm. Uh, and we just thought, you know what? This isn't right for a compact space. It was very difficult to try and get it, because it... Uh, most inversions were just too, they just came up too big, didn't they? Yeah, and it just didn't work, I don't think, for, for this project. So, as you'll see in a second, big drum roll, what we decided to build was... <laughs> That's a little clue, That's a little clue actually. <laughs> little clue, it was a... Mara! There it is, just going in. Spinball Wizard going in. <laughs> well, so. what, what we actually um, originally thought Spinball Wizard would be good as was a, an indoor coaster, because I'm... Uh, a few people have talked about where the Spinball Wizard could have actually gone in the Black Hole Tent at uh, Alton Towers before, obviously, the Smiler took its place. I mean, you look at that space where Smiler is now, and it's a huge area, obviously. I imagine. Yeah, I mean, you know, they got a lot with Smiler. They got a lot of stuff packed into complicated. a very small space. There's not one straight bit of track on that ride, is there? Apart from the left hills and brake runs, and that's it. And you can see where they're coming from. Like, why put in a a standard spinning coaster on that site when you can have a, you can have a 14 looping coaster. And you know. it's paid off for them, it really worked, it was successful, it's, uh, it's become one of the most popular rides in the country. It has, you know, and as much as I'm not a massive fan of the Smiler myself, <laughs> it works Same at the park. Being tall, it uh, can cause a, a, quite a bit of shoulder pains with those restraints. I think it causes it for a lot of people, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Uh, but yeah, more about this coaster then. So what the plan was, basically I put in like the footprint. I wanted to put a bit of a wall in so we had a boundary. Because with these sort of projects, you think, right, it's going to be a dark coaster. And then it ends up being absolutely massive. And goes outside. But we thought, we'll keep it inside, we'll keep it compact. Um, so you'll see a lot of uh, adjust adjustments made to the track and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, if only you could do that in real life. Mario, they're putting bits of track up, they're getting well annoyed. They're getting, they're getting annoyed with the amount of trains we're trashing as well. <laughs> yeah. We're sending up car after car after car and it's trashing them. Yeah, and there it goes, ready? And yeah. psh, well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, with this one we decided to have a bit of a mess about and it actually turns up, uh, by the end of it, it's actually quite a long coaster. Uh, that we end up building here with, with a dual lift hill, two lift hills on it's it. It's a Dragon Fury special, this one. It is. So here I was looking at a Helix, maybe. Yeah, they, and... they tend to, uh, they tend to feature. We, we went with a, well, we went with a few more like bunny hop style. There's a lot of airtime on this, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, like here we can see there's a, there's a big bunny hill coming up, which score over the wall. <laughs> yeah, and that goes again. Yeah, a lot of messed around. That's why with this one, normally I would build roller coasters in real time. But with this one, I thought, let's speed it up. I've never <laughs> even attempted to build a spinning coaster in the game. They are difficult. Let's speed in fact, it up. We only realised after we did the first drop that we, you had to actually set um, the engage. You had to actually set a manual engage for the spinning. Yes. At the moment, on the lift hill, it's not spinning. Um, we thought, because obviously, um, Spinball Wizard it seems to spin on its um, on weights. Um, so we thought that was probably how it's going to do on this. But it seems you've got to actually initiate its uh, spinning feature. Yeah, which is quite interesting. I mean, I think Spinball has that too, but it definitely... It's unlocked from the station, I think. Yeah, much. yeah, it is. I mean, you see with Spinball Wizard at Alton Towers and, and Dragon's Fury yeah, as well, as well. Uh, them sort of coasters, you know, if you have a full car on there or balance it right, then you do get more spinning. If it, you lean as well, have a bit of a lean on the top of the left L. You can, you can sort of get it to go the way you want. It definitely makes a difference. I know there's people out there that say it doesn't, but I definitely think it does make a difference um, with that one. So you can see it here. That's quite a nice angle on the first drop. Quite a steep, very Dragon's Fury, actually. Yeah. But instead of going up into a horseshoe, we sort of bank it round and then take it into another quite bank. steep drop <laughs> <laughs> and send it round that way. But uh, as you can hear what's going on here, uh, we're then coming round into like a mid-course section. And then we send it down into another drop, which goes into a bit of a helix as well. Yeah, so a bit of a carousel section. I'll uh, let you uh, see that.
continue. Like I say, it takes about another six or seven minutes to, to complete this <laughs> coaster did, spell. Uh, we did mess around with it a lot. Uh, we did, and you'll see a lot of it gets deleted towards the end. Um, <laughs> And then I rebuild the, it. Here's the carousel coming in. Very, uh, very typical standards that one. Yeah, standard sort of spin ball. But we do get a horseshoe element in a little bit later on. So yeah, very custom one actually. Feel, yeah, a bit different. And so there's been a lot of stuff going on in the theme park industry. And lots has, of announcements yeah. over the past <clears throat> sort of couple of weeks. A lot from Disney, Universal. I mean, Dragon Challenge. Yeah, especially. sad times uh, with Dragon Challenge going. That was a, a coaster. In fact, um, uh, I've actually managed to get. Um, a very unique, well, compared to what Sean had. Um, you actually wrote it as Dueling Dragons. When it was actually Dueling as well, uh, which is an, it was a very, uh, very unique experience, especially in the uh, just before the vertical loop scene, the two trains come together, then shooting up into the loops. That was a very, uh, especially on the front row, that caught you out by surprise. I'd love to have done it. <clears throat> so did you do it on the front row then? I did, did a front row yeah. ride on both, and it's because uh, it's a there's a big uh, flat section of track as the trains come towards each other. Um, I think that's why I don't rate them as a coaster then. I wasn't really that sad with the news, you know. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's... I think also with, with um, obviously, Dragon Challenge now, as it's called, uh, the view from the top of the lift hill isn't that spectacular. I mean, it's not one of those universal rides where you, <laughs> where you get blown away by it. I mean, you look over and you see a big warehouse with giant fans in the roof. It's, yeah. it's not exactly a good uh, theme element, but I don't think they can do anything about that. I think that's just a plant that's next to it. Yeah, well, that's it. It's all been demolished. And, yeah, 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 it's... I think that's one of the... Is that the first B&M coasters have been officially removed? Because obviously Chang got removed, but that was only because of the floods. Yeah, there's been a few that have been relocated and yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's none that have actually been scrapped. No, and this is... It's looking that way. I mean, that is, by all means, not confirmed at the moment. And I couldn't see them get like, completely scrapping it off. I mean, I can see them maybe relocating, but what part would actually have those two? I mean, each I coast mean. has got five inversions. That's ten inversions, and they're saying that it's going to be a roller coaster mm -hmm. themed to Harry Potter, but it's suitable for everyone. That's that's what they need really, because obviously, uh, Forbidden Journey and uh, obviously Gringotts, Gringotts yeah. they're, they're, they're both high thrill rides, aren't they? So. You really want some because obviously Harry Potter's a family experience. The the whole the the movies, the books. Um, I mean, the area itself is is family orientated, but the two coasters they've got they're very uh, they're very thrill based. So I think a, a family uh, a family coaster will be it'll work well. I think it will. Going back to our spinning coaster, you can see there we've got lift two, which has just <laughs> got, got in. Another, uh, intimidation part though for another drop. This yeah. is before the horseshoe. Well, this took a lot of time trying. to... You'll see this now. We do a lot of messing about here. The only, the only problem, I suppose, with this coaster and building it on this game is the fact it doesn't offer the horseshoe, which is a very signature kind of element for these rides, as a pre-built. You've got to literally build the whole thing yourself. Um, which, You're seeing this is what yeah. I'm trying to do here. <laughs> yeah, it does um, take a lot of... Uh... This in real time took about 15 minutes, this one element. Yeah. And I was really struggling. <laughs> we end up digging down, as you saw there. And this isn't the finished one you see going in here. It ends up being we, completely we, redone. We thought it, would, it wouldn't... It would only just make this. Because these, these coasters seem to regain a lot of... The, well, they seem to like, withhold a lot of the speed. Uh, so we do change it and make it a bit taller and wider as well as you'll see. Like a lot of people, you know, don't realise as well. I've not really ha built that many roller coasters in this game. <laughs> I might have been playing it since November. This started way back in November last year. But the only coasters I've built are the ones you've seen in this game. I and mean, you can even see down there in the, in the uh, time counter, uh, we're down to now uh, year 93 of the game. Yeah, that's, something that's, like that. What's that in real time? That's like... It's a, it's a lot. It's, it's too lot. much time. That's what that is. I time I could have spent at real theme parks. I think a year was it equates to about an hour, is it, or something like that? Like our CT was very. Uh... Ooh, look, I'm gonna look at the angles there. Yeah, we're saying as well how how realistic they've made. Well, good, you know, good, good credit is made, you know, to the team of the, the the actual design team of the game. Yeah, Frontier um, did a great job. The, the little actual, details. Like the arm on the side of the train, you can just see if just catch a glimpse of it, the little arm that uh, I think attaches onto the left hill and uh, or the, 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 the spinning section I think or even something to do with the station even but that was even put in as a little it's because that's how the, the trains actually look I mean, I mean this is going to have elaborate theming as well I must point out there's going to be a lot inside here yeah, this whole thing yeah a lot of lighting smoke effects maybe <laughs> fire effects and it, it is going to have a space 
theme. This isn't going to be... It's not going to be the... Uh... End of the world. Yeah, like that. The other bit. This is going to be finished off Space Mountain style uh, with some really good theme inside, soaring through the planet style, I think. Yeah, very. Uh, it's very more intense, Space Mountain. Yeah, definitely, in terms of, you know, this is a spinning coaster. I think it'll work quite well. How we fit that in with the theme, that's going to be down to you guys to decide because this is nearly the end of this episode. And then in the next one, uh, I'll, I'll theme this up and look at your, some of your suggestions, what you think we can do with this. I know you're probably wondering, yes, that we've got three, two supports sticking out of the building. That, that will be changed. Uh, we do extend the building back uh, because we realise we have to extend the station a bit to get more cars on because at the moment we can only get three without a block section mode. Uh, and that's what we change uh, uh, towards the end. We can get four end. with block section, but it does stop on the left for quite a long time. So we don't we, want that. We thought going normal, continue, there we go, you're smoothing it out. Yeah, you can use the uh, either the smooth banking or smooth all option. I tend to use smooth all quite a bit. Uh, I didn't do it on some of the sections because that, it took away the height. Um, that's so one you, thing it does do it. It kind of it kind of makes it a bit softer. So it will, it, if you've got like a uh, like a bunny hill, for example, uh, just be careful when you smooth it out because sometimes, as much as it will smooth it out at first, it will then start lowering the uh, the, the actual height of it as well. So uh, that's one thing to bear in mind with the smooth tool. You can see just here as well how uh, we're getting towards the end of the layouts. In a moment, you'll actually see another clip. Uh, where I decide to completely redo this whole section what you're seeing being built now. Uh, basically, I like using the autocomplete to get it right in uh, at the end, mainly because uh, the first time I built a coaster in this, it took me so long <laughs> to just get it to attack, so I used the autocomplete, and I've kind of just took the lazy option with that all the time <laughs> with it. It is considered the cheat option, but to be honest, it does help a lot. It does. It's there to be to be used yeah, at the end of the you day. You want to put it in like there, you just... Because you wouldn't think to be able to do that, it would just take so much time. Uh, I mean, you probably, if you're really, really skilled at creating coasters, you could probably do... Which I'm definitely not. <laughs> like, my, my sort of forte <laughs> is, is theming, and yeah. to be honest, I like getting the, the theming buildings. done. I mean, we, we know that you can do good hotel buildings. Yeah, that's the thing. So we'll uh, show you this uh, little clip in a second uh, of this coaster uh, with a uh, new ending what we put on. Here you can see me then redesigning the ending. So what I wanted to do here was uh, extend the station out, which I did do to make sure we could get more trains on there. Uh, well. Yeah, it changed colour. <laughs> yeah, it's gone from being spinball sort of colours uh, to just do all dark, all black, just so it fits inside this uh, warehouse that we're going to build up around it in the next episode. But if you've got any suggestions, comment below um, so I can put them in. Like I say, by all means, I do enjoy building the coasters, but for me, it's more about everything else in this game. Like, I love the theming, the buildings, the firework shows, all of that is what really makes Planet Coaster for me. And in a way, the name Planet Coaster doesn't really do the game justice because it's so much more than Planet just building Park, coasters. Really it's pla yeah, and as much as that is the name of it, and I love it, uh, you know, it's so much more than that. It's all about uh, the experience, what you get inside this game. And the and, realism, of course. Yeah, and uh, talking about realism and experience, that's all you're going to see of this uh, for this episode. But what I am going to do now, just before we wrap up, is show you a little bit what I've done off camera over the past week or so in terms of making this project even more real. Uh, so let's have a little look at this while I've done.
So there we go then, the track for the spinning coaster is all complete there. And you know what, I'm pleased with it. It's not the most complex layout, but yeah, it looks good for the first time having to go building one of these. I think that looks all right, and there's a lot more work to come with that in terms of adding different platforms in there, uh, visual effects, and of course building up the main building around that as well to make sure it doesn't look stick out like a sore thumb, so to speak. Uh, because you look at this down here, uh, where we built the dark ride, it all fits in beautifully, doesn't it? Yeah, like, you look at that, really good. it looks amazing. And that's the same sort of feel I want to go for with this up here, so oh, we're gonna... That's just the shell into that. Yeah, yeah, this is the shell, this is the initial plans, and obviously that's the edge of the area here. We're gonna even put some rocks along the side, uh, trees, hashtag <laughs> rockwork, trees on the side. I'm thinking like an access bridge here, back over into the fantasy area, which we'll continue work on soon. And then I'm thinking monorail here as well. Uh, we maybe interrupt the monorail with this building here and do a very abstract building. Like, I imagine like a plaza, uh, Epcot style, future world yeah. style in Epcot, big open space spaces with like flower beds and modern structures and this monorail running around a bit like the people mover does maybe with a bit of a cover over it in certain sections and that's what I'm feeling so it might just look like a bland boring spinning coaster at the moment but there's so much to come with that and it will probably be the most highly themed roller coaster on the park once that's done. Now, I haven't actually shown you this, but I've been working on the actual park off camera. I mean, we look at that. Talk about we're, realism. Yeah, right? we're, we're like, realism, yeah. We're two thirds of the way complete with this project. Looks great though, the park. Come it out. does. I mean, you got the, you've got your iconic rides there, like, such as the RMC, and what we started, that started it all off, and the- The wind coaster up here, we've got the rapids, the volcano, we did a fireworks display, check that video out. You look at that now, and this is two thirds of the way there. Uh, obviously, we've still got a themed area to put in down here. Not decided on a theme yet for that, but I'm open for suggestions. We've got the rest of our sci-fi area. And this is basically the access road here, which is going to run round to the back. You've got the arrow on it as well. You've got the arrow on it. That's <laughs> going to run round to more hotels and car parking round the back here. Uh, so what I'm thinking is, just to put it into perspective, what I want to do now, uh, I'm going to finish this area off in the next few episodes, then go into fantasy and do more of that. Then I'm going to add a couple more rides over into the pirate area here at the back and then work on this final corner and the big last themed area Comments for the park. Comment below what you want to see. Comment below what you want to see for all of it. I mean, I've got, I would like to put maybe an inverted coaster in from B&M, a dive coaster from B&M, uh, but, but I am open to, yeah, I'm open to <laughs> suggestions. This down here will be a car park. Uh, there'll be a monorail running down to the entrance. This access road, like I say, is going to continue up here. So in terms of this sci-fi area, there's only like a bit of an L shape left there for some more flats and some other things. I don't know, but I'm open to suggestions, and that pretty much sums up this episode. Uh, you'll also probably notice down here off camera uh, that I've put the train going around the back and also started to put some buildings in here as well, uh, similar to what we've got over on this side of the lagoon. So, yeah, so much still to do, but I would say two-thirds of this project is now complete. And at the stage, you look at that, that's my favourite angle of it, looking at it, it zoomed out, nice. and it does look fantastic. And, of course, we've got this up here, and in the next episode, we'll do the building, we'll do the theming, and start to really push out the rest of that sci-fi episode uh, area. So, in the next episode, <laughs> push out the episode, push out the area. So, in the next episode, we can then work on the fantasy. So, I reckon two more episodes up here, and then we'll over into fantasy bit more pirate and then down into the final themed area. Then we can work on how much you're going to charge for this, this park. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've already opened. If you want to see it open, it's what, six or seven episodes back where we opened it. Just to test to see how the... Uh, yeah, and it works. It handled the crowd so well. And you look at that park, it is gorgeous. And one thing I do love about it is there's nothing really that's ridiculously high. Of course, you've got the RMC, uh, but even that's not ridiculous. You know what I mean? Wow. Everything's realistic in this park. And I've tried to keep it realism. And by all means, with a future park, I might go over something like Cedar Point or Thorpe Park where it's massive coasters but for this I wanted an experience park and so far it really it's is like looking a, that way. It's like a cross between Disney and uh, Port of Ventura isn't it? It like is. Way. Yeah very similar to both. Uh, yeah and I think it works great. Right Pirate area, it's I know, I know Put PA doesn't have a sci fi area, but you know, it's in the it's in the relative areas as well. So, obviously, you've got uh, your sci fi area off to the, the right, um, fantasy straight ahead. It's a very, uh, it's very, uh like how you'd expect it to be laid out, Disney style, <clears throat> yeah, Disney with thrill rides, your main street, and 
It's a very different version of Disney in a way, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there we go. Thanks for coming along anyway, Jack, for another episode. It's been good. Yeah, good bit, bit, of a, uh, bit of a shorter one, but that, I think that's the best way to go forward with this series because of that much of the content going on with the channel. Uh, I'll always be honest with you guys, and at the end of the day, I've just not had the time to commit for hours and hours of, to, into this game. I didn't want to rush this park. I'm not going to rush this park with all the effort that's gone into it. I'll take my time with it and do episodes when I can, but I think episodes like this, which are less than half an hour or so, are much easy to put together in a few hours we can work on the park and then go ahead from there with it so there we go thank you very much for watching and thanks for bearing with me on the planet coaster series here on theme park worldwide thanks for coming along jack and uh, that means it's time to cue those credits see you later